All right, so right now we're setting up. And what that means is we have to get all the wires and the hoses and everything hooked up and, and bled. Um, to do arthroscopy, we use a small camera and we also, with a light cord, but we also have, we need water so we can see. So right now, Sammy's setting up the water and we can't start till the water goes through and gets bled. The patient's leg has been marked. You'll see is it my initials. We're going to do a timeout, which means we'll make sure we're doing the correct side and go over the procedure. And we do shave his leg so we don't get hair in the wound. So we usually have to read the procedure. And since I've gotten older, she has to make it big. There we go. We're doing a right knee lateral and medial meniscectomy, which means to remove some of the meniscus versus a repair. If we do a repair, we're gonna do a bone marrow transfer. All right, we're on All right. the right side, everybody. Right side. Right side. Right. So when you do arthroscopy, I don't know if you can see, there's two ways to go. You can come from the inside called medial or the lat or lateral. Most people come from the other side, that's called lateral. I come from the medial side. It's a Philadelphia tradition. So I trained in Philadelphia. And before we start the case, we always give people local or fluid so that it numbs the inside of their knee so they don't have pain afterwards. And we'll usually give them a shot before and after the case. So on average, most people don't take more than a couple of Percocets with this kind of procedure. All right, we're starting, everybody's happy? Love it up, Ray. So this gentleman had surgery on his knee, including having a new ACL put in and work on one of his meniscus about three or four years ago. Um, so most of this work is done with us just looking at the TV screen. It's kind of like playing a video game. White is normal and the, and the red is a little bit of blood. That usually goes away once we just get everything cleaned up. So we tore his lateral meniscus. That's the lateral meniscus. That's the cartilage in your knee on the outside. I'll show you a little better. Knife. What? So when we look, this white triangular structure is the meniscus. This is the tibia and that's the femur. We usually will push down. We want to see, I got a probe. Thanks, sir. So we're looking for this white structure behind up top. It's hard to see if I can get in there. That This structure behind the pro, that's called the popliteus. This is what's called a radial tear. And they are somewhat repairable these days. Um, can I get the shaver? So before we get too far, we're gonna go look at it and see if we can fix this. Only 5% of all tears are repairable. The rest that we usually cut it out. So for most people, we just cut out the tear. In young people, we do try to fix them. The problem is you have to have blood supply to fix it. And the blood supply generally only occurs from the where I'm pointing to about here. After that, there's usually not enough blood to fix. Uh, we're going to play and look at this because he's young and give him the best chance to see if we can make this seal. I don't know yet, but I don't know. It's a borderline call. It's some kind of pro.
This side, Chris, is decent. Yeah. Right right? My concern is this is just shredded almost. See it? Yeah. 28 year old, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's not technically at the white. He's just he's just short of the white white zone, which is right there because it's four millimeters. I mean, I know we could fix this. The question is, would he ever heal it? It's about seven. I'm sorry. I'll do the. Yeah, I mean, and you want to put two stitches in, and I'm not sure. It's pretty oh, he has a self sewer. You put one bite up here, and you put the other bite here, and then you'd come in here to like here. We did one of these just last week, and it went great. All right, I'm going to come back to that one. I haven't decided yet. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for the moment. Now we're looking in the center of his knee. Graph looks good. That's his ACL graft actually from a couple years ago. And you can see it actually looks pretty good. When you examine him, he does have a little bone spur right there. Um, and that's common when you do it. He does have a little bit of striation, but it's pretty clean. So this is the inside of his knee called the medial side. And this is the side that was fixed several years ago. So medial is definitely not repairable. A lot of times when they re-tear, a lot of times when they re-tear, they tear where the sutures went in. So the peripheral part heals, the back of the knee heals, where you fixed. But they, they tear through, the, um, through the, where the sutures were. The suture holds. Yeah, like they pull off. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a stress riser. It never heals. Right? Because you put a two millimeter hole through the meniscus and there's no blood supply, so it never heals. Uh, so they rip through uh, there. But that's okay in the sense that you... Um, so this device here is called Shaver and it spins really quick like a Dremel drill. It will only take dead tissue. It will not take things that are alive. I have a biter. Great. Please. So now we're just gonna we're gonna trim the edge. Oh, this just cracking. We're gonna trim the edge so that it doesn't catch again like a hangout, hopefully. Yeah. 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 So what we did is we, we bit, we took a biter, which is an instrument that bites, and then we'll just take back this corner so there's no edge, hopefully, so it doesn't catch anymore. <laughs> So if you undergo knee arthroscopy, it's not uncommon that people will move the camera around to get different views just to make sure they see everything as well. So the whole back heel, that's interesting. It is. That's weird interesting. So what we're talking about is this gentleman had previous surgery and this whole meniscus, you can see <coughs> this is where he tore before but this whole part of the meniscus is healed. So the whole back healed, he only tore, re -tore up in the front, which in some respects is really good for him because that means the rest of his meniscus is intact. I wonder what happened, you know? It's kind of funny we're, that- we're just a little tear. I, I, I would have a small biter. They're small. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I would almost say it's a new tear, except I saw a piece of stitch. 
And again, I'm only about to just try to submit it so there's no edge. We try to leave as much of the meniscus as possible because that's what bears weight and is what prevents you from getting the arthritis in your knee. You just don't want edges. The other thing we're doing when we're here is we're looking at his cartilage, which is this white stuff there and there. And you can see it looks pretty good. So he doesn't really have much arthritis yet, which is good. Now we're up at the top of his knee. Can I get a bump so I can see? Just I just want to. I think it's on your. That's the probe. So looking at it directly. It doesn't look like the tissue is good enough to hold stitches, so we're just going to trim out the, the piece that's torn. Coming through the previous incision. It's just so So this instrument is only about three millimeters, and we're just taking out the little piece that's torn. We're going to leave everything else that we can. The other thing is, although you guys can only see, you can't feel, normal tissue has a certain crunch to it. So you know when you're there, where abnormal tissue is kind of squishy. Mm -hmm. It looks like that's probably old. Um, yeah. If you look for the people on the camera, He's got some bone right here, which means that tear is probably old. And because it's been sitting and bent over for a while, it just eroded the cartilage or it's stable. I want to leave him as much as I can. Kind of slide up. The goal is to make it so that it's what's called stable, so it doesn't want to catch. But you also want to leave them as much as possible. You flip them up. So these look like big bites, but they're not. This whole instrument's only three or four millimeters. This leg is intact. Most of this one is still It's so good. He examines interesting. He's got, when you examine him, he's got a little bit of increased translation, a smidge, but he's got a really nice endpoint. It's like, boom, it doesn't move. It's with the graphs in the back. 
He was a college athlete. He played all day. He did. He was a football player. I mean, it's just so weird that that back looks so good except toward here. You can't explain this. I don't see that's what looks bad from here. I don't see the piece. Well, that since you picked it up, it's a lot better. Yeah, just, I see it. Give me a slide off or a straight. I'm going to be done in a second. I just need to show you how to get a good play. And this instrument is called a shaver. It goes back and forth or oscillates, and it will only take tissue that's damaged. It won't take normal tissue. And that looks better. Right. We're done. So he had a torn medial and lateral meniscus. He tore both of the cartilages in his knee. His ACL graft was intact, so we'll irrigate his knee and we'll close him with stitches. Most of the time they get closed with absorbable stitches via plastic surgery, and they don't have to have the stitches taken out. Dave, up. Sorry about that, Chris. I couldn't, I, I'll be honest with you, it was no. pretty crappy. Listen, you yeah. know I'm always honest. You know, if his medial side had held up, I think, I don't, I've never seen that actually. I've not really seen where the whole, Noise used to do that, where he said that when you looked at meniscus, if you went back on them on 100 that were doing well, only 35% were actually healed, and the other ones were retained. So that's what you see, where it's partially healed, but it's intact. Yeah. But it looks like he tore the extreme through that one piece of an anchor. Yep. Yeah, he definitely saw that. Yeah. Right. So he probably tore through the anchor. Yeah. So this is a plastic surgery stitch. This is called a subcuticular stitch, <laughs> cut, flush. And so when we close the wounds, you can barely see the portals. You can, and we'll just cover these with band-aids and some glue. And you can get this wet. And for me, in two or three days, you can shower. So if you look here, you can barely even see the incisions. And so this is what happens for arthroscopy. It's two little stab wounds. We then will usually re-inject them with a little bit more Novocaine so that when they wake up, they will have, hopefully they'll have six to 10 hours of pain relief. And the surgical tech usually will put on the, the benzoin and the strips and dress the wound. But we're all done.